Hello everyone. Since I started collecting Phalaenopsis species this year, I've acquired five of them so far. Now it's five, but it will be soon 10, 15, 20, and so on. I'm sure my collection will grow that way. Uh, as far as I know, there are 60 Phalaenopsis species found in nature and mostly from Southern Asia. So if, what if, I could be able to collect them all, 60 of them, it would be quite a show, right? The more, the merrier. <laughs> uh, I'll give you a short tour on my Phalaenopsis species because 12 of them are in bloom, like this one. <laughs> the first stop is the Phalaenopsis equestris fretiserulia. When I see it by its appearance, it shows a sign of suffering from root loss for a while. As you see, the biggest one, the leaves, is this one. And then it's getting smaller, smaller, and smaller. Now it's putting a new leaf. So, yeah, it's poor thing. But it's also a fighter. It's putting out new roots, two in the front, and then three in the back. One thing I've noticed about root is the old ones are very fat and chubby. It's very cute compared to new ones. So I'll show you here. I'm sorry. Here is this is the new root, the old root. You see how fat it is. So I think when I see these new roots grow as big as and chubby as the old ones, that will be the sign of the full recovery of this Phalaenopsis equestris. Speaking of roots, yes, I should show you this Phalaenopsis bellina. Here it is. Um, I posted a reporting video a week ago and it's already started showing an active root tip. One, is it only one, but it's a sign of recovery, right? I'm more than happy to see it. Let me show you. Here. Can you see that? It's not focusing. Yeah, here it is. It's breaking out. I guess new medium and warmer weather must have helped it bounce back very quickly. A few characters I noticed from this one is um, these very thin leaves, very thin leaves, like papery, and the thin roots as well. They re resemble with the Phalaenopsis tetraspis C1 too, but not this lighter green leaves. This lighter green leaves is compared to, I show you, compared to tetraspis, oh no, sorry, equestris. You see how different the colors are. This one's very light, almost a pale looking. The other one is very dark green. So there you can see many variety of leaf colors. And next thing I would like to show you is this Siduria japonica. It has a nickname, a beauty and the beast. As you see, it used to have a flower spike here. When it was in bloom, the flowers are adorable and lovely, surrounded in sweet lemony fragrance that reminds me of a beauty. But when you see the roots, see, they are very thick and long, like beast. It's really contrast between roots and the little flowers and leaves. These beast-looking roots tend to retain more water than others. So if you water it too often, they will get blackened very easily and rotted away. So when you think the medium is almost dry and the time for watering, then wait for another few days. It seems to appreciate the dry period between watering. And one more thing, as you see this on the roots, did you notice the white patches? It shows on the wet, healthy roots after watering. At first, I thought it reminds me of a patches on a giraffe. And then, 
octopus legs <laughs> with tentacles. How cool is that? All in all, it's a really pleasant old kit to have in your collection. Now let's see some flowers. <laughs> Here. This beauty. Focus tree. It's a Phalaenopsis Stortiana variety nobilis. You usually see white variety, but this one is greenish yellow, as you see. Flowers are wonderful. I really like this green background color with these reddish maroon spots. It is supposed to be fragrant, but I haven't detected it yet. When it puts out flower spike and develop flower buds, they are normal. But once the buds matures and they start to open up, like this one, it takes long, long sweet time. The fully matured bud to this one with a little bit of cracks in it takes a week. And then from this one to this, half or more than half opened up flower, it takes two more weeks. And then from this one to this fully opened up flowers, it takes one more than one week. So it's the slowest flower opener ever. I thought I could show this Stortiana beautiful flowers with Japonica together because they started opening up their buds at the same time. But while the Japonica was flowering, producing beautiful fragrance and dropping off all the flowers, this one only opened up one fully opened the flower. As slow as turtle. <laughs> but when you see these beautiful flowers, spots, and the leaves, it's worth waiting. It compensates your patience nonetheless. So let's move on to next flowers. This is the famous Phalaenopsis tetraspis C1. When you see the flowers, the color is very striking. When you see it close, there's a, not only red color, there's a purple in the center, yellow throat, and also the, this cotton looking, this cotton looking lips. Texture, I mean. <laughs> it has one flower spike with three flowers. And then all the flowers are different. This one has all red. This one is two white. And then this one is one white. This is one of the interesting characteristics it has. I was wondering what kind of magical spell it needs in order to get this kind of red colors or more white colors. Some people say the amount of light could manipulate it or the temperature could manipulate it. But this one is since a warm growing orchid, I'm going to try some experiment. Uh, I got this red dominant flowers by placing it in the south facing window. So with shade, half shade and half direct sunlight. But this time, I'm going to place it in the shaded place without any sunlight, direct sunlight. Then it will show up what kind of flower can be affected, that affected by the light. And then we'll see if soon, because here, you see, there is, this is a sequential bloomer. It's putting out, it's bearing another new flower, but so it's the color is affected by the amount of the light. We'll find it soon. I think orchid species are full of surprises like a human being. They look similar and they grow in a similar environment. But yet they still have their own individual unique characteristics. I'm really lucky to have them in my living area and also grateful to smell them and see their evolution and these beautiful flowers. I'm also so thankful 
to the mother nature that made this happen. <laughs> I think this is all today. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Bye.